tonight's episode, Murder by the Numbers. And after all those clicks, I think we're back. Let me get some uh, feedback on the audio on the audio level. Appreciate it. All right, so we're starting back up again to go after some ATF comments. Let's try that. And we've been reading some of the. I got the hiccups now. Uh, I've been reading some of the receiver redefinition comments earlier. Been fine, and then I go live, and then I get the hiccups. So now we're going to read some of the uh, comments from the stabilizing braces. So there's 2009. Sorry about that. And we will right click and open a bunch of the, uh, well, right click and open in a new tab, everything off the front page. Whenever I read them, I like to go with the entire front page so that we can see what a consecutive group looks like. And I don't know if that means anything or not, but I feel like it tells us something. So I do it every time. I'm distracted by something and it's driving me nuts. So I appreciate the uh, patience while I'm distracted, but also in letting me do this, which is distracting me from the thing that is distracting me. So um, now we're going to go back to the first one that I opened up, and that was actually just the first 25. Why don't we go with those first 25 and see what happens? Uh, we did name this one. Uh, reading comments for Super Chats. Of course, you're not obligated, but if you feel like Super Chatting, I will gladly use that money to pay for food and bills. All right, so next we're going to go into comment 1416. Also, I put in here, if you want my commentary, go with the hashtag 42. And if you don't want any commentary, additional commentary, just want to hear the comments, go with hashtag 81, and I'll just go with whatever the crowd says. <laughs> All right. uh, 1416. All gun laws are an infringement, and I'm tired of criminals having better guns than me. Your laws have no merit. They just make criminals more money. Stop being a joke at the expense of us taxpayers. That one's to the point, and it hits on a bunch of different levels. Next up is comment 1414. This new regulation would actually create felons overnight. The new proposed rules act as bans to braces due to the nature of the post system you plan on implementing. Implementing, It's quite impossible to have a braced pistol and have less than four points. Not only is this new ruling detrimental to citizens, it's very detrimental to our rights as Americans. Hmm. This looks boilerplate, but I haven't read enough of these to have found any boilerplates yet. And it seems like the brace people aren't into boilerplates. Well, let's find out. This is comment 1435. I'm going to try to shift myself around here. It does comment 1435. The proposed ruling is an arbitrary set of rules designed to. Oh, you know what my other problem is? I didn't make it big enough for you people. Now that you people can read it, it's easier for you to read it. Okay. The proposed ruling is an arbitrary set of rules designed to entrap millions of Americans, or at best, extract $200 in tax revenue out of them. The rules are very easy to mistakenly break, especially with an inexperienced gun owner, and 10 years in prison for putting a scope on a pistol without knowing better seems pretty steep to me. Furthermore, the devices used as examples of now an SBR in the document are devices that the ATF has allowed to be sold for literally years and marketed to consumers. Retroactively punishing someone for a device they have owned legally for years is unfair and frankly unenforceable as they ATF by owns 
its own admission, has no idea how many of these devices exist in the wild. Excuse me. Tried to cut this one mid sentence. Uh, in addition, this is not merely issuing a guidance. This is downright changing existing law, which should be left up to Congress, not the regulatory agency looking for reasons to put otherwise law-abiding citizens in federal prison for a decade over a piece of plastic. It is worth pointing out that this past 18 months has been an extensive lesson for this country on the impact of violence from law enforcement. And frankly, I think the last thing America needs is another reason to send highly militarized police after POCs and other populations merely looking to enjoy sports shooting or protect themselves. What is POC? Furthermore, the statement that SBRs are unusually deadly is false, considering 95% of gun deaths is from run-of-the-mill handguns, and shortening the barrel of nearly all rifle calibers actually considerably decreases terminal ballistics of these cartridges. Finally, I'm particularly disappointed in the agency for choosing to use the example of mass shootings a term which has arbitrary definition and actually accounts for a minority of gun crime in this letter. Both of the individuals reference, I reference to, I refuse to use their names, were also well known to federal law enforcement prior to their crimes being committed. Who is more at fault, a piece of plastic or the agencies that the public fund to keep us safe, dropping the ball yet again? That's a good one. Uh, holds her feet to the fire. It's a little long, I guess. I mean, it's not too long. She's long for me. I'm sick. Um, Clover, drop five bucks. Appreciate it. I think uh, I'm way behind you on throwing five bucks back and forth. Um, appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, that's why I leave the thing in here for the commentary or not, because I figure some people would probably just rather hear it and not me blabbing about it. The next one is 144. Four. Uh, so let's just say anybody with super chats gets their way until somebody else super chats or a whole bunch of people gang up on you. So let me know if you want comments or not. I'm gonna leave that super chat up there to guilt everybody who thinks I'm sitting here reading because I got nothing else to do. Like I'm independently wealthy and I got nothing else to do. I'm sitting here reading because things are horrible right now. But anyway, uh, I oppose the change of criteria for defining firearms with pistol stabilizing braces. There are millions upon millions of law-abiding citizens who use these braces as designated by their manufacturers. A de facto ban on these stabilizing braces would turn millions of law-abiding citizens into felons overnight. The intended purpose is to, best of my knowledge, is to allow for single-handed firing of a firearm classified as a pistol, as defined by current regulation. Exactly what about firearms that have stabilizing braces makes it more deadly or concealable? This is completely objective proposal. Being that the Ninth Circuit, the Honorable Judge Roger Benitez, did I say his name? Uh, already ruled that regulation based on firearm characteristics or appearance, also known as assault weapons, is unconstitutional. I guess I'm commenting, so kudos for including current stuff in this especially on something that they decided to throw at us every four months so we should definitely include the things that have happened in the meantime you know that they would be throwing stuff at us if someone had decided to use one of these braces in some sort of crime that they wanted to exploit um so by making these characteristics or firearms parts and redefining them as such where any configuration that does not fall within the guidelines proposed here would again turn law-abiding citizens into felons. This is entirely politically biased in favor of the current administration's agenda. Need I remind a well-regulated militia necessary for the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Our own second amendment to the Bill of Rights Constitution states it pretty clear. And this proposed criteria change is in fact a gross infringement on US citizens' second amendment rights given at birth, thank you. It's pretty good, except we aren't given those rights at birth. We're given our rights in the Second, Second Amendment of the Constitution protects those rights, but right on. Next up is 1423. 
There are multitude of legal and technical issues with the proposed rule, that much is clear. There are others who will, I do appreciate that. Thanks for letting me kill people in at 10 bucks. That's 15 bucks more than I had this morning. I do appreciate that. Uh, there are others who will state these things. Let me start from the beginning. This is comment 1423. There are a multitude of legal and technical issues with the proposed rule. That much is clear. There are others who will state these things more eloquently and in depth, but I will do my very best to give my piece on the matter. First, an AR-15 platform pistol configuration that has always been legal may score 20 plus on the proposed table. Things are as simple as using a standard AR-15 buffer tube, mounting rifle style iron sights, using an optic that the ATF deems to have in, 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 incompatible eye relief for one hand fire, or using heavier components such as a quad rail hand guards may be enough to push a previously permitted firearm over the legal limit. <clears throat> All of the aforementioned are fairly common features of existing legal pistol builds with stabilizing braces. Furthermore, language such as rifle sights, incompatible eye relief, or that pertaining to the rear surface area of the brace is extremely vague and subjective which would likely create a great deal of confusion as to whether certain configurations are legal. It could even further be argued that this may lead to unequal judgment of legality based on the opinions of the agent reviewing the firearm. Now, I should also mention that there are upwards of 3 million arm braces in circulation, and this proposed rule could very well make many of the peaceful owners of such accessories criminals overnight. The only reason that stabilizing braces have become so widespread is because the ATF has long held that they are legal with the vast, vast majority of configurations that people may use for their guns. That is more or less all I have to say. Before I wrap this up, I would like, I would just like to reiterate one last time that this confusing, subjective, and contradictory proposal would land innocent Americans in jail for no good reason. Um, I would say, uh, if I was, I had never said it before. I was going to say if I was a lot younger, but I would have never said this before. But some people would say every time you read uh, three million, oh, blah, 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 would peaceful owners overnight, criminals overnight, right? with the whole criminals overnight, you would use that as like a thing to drink. I'm gonna say, whenever you hear turn the people law-abiding citizens into criminals overnight, you know what? That's an opportunity to write another letter, right? That's like a little, what's that little pesky thing on your shoulder telling you to do stuff over oh, here? Yeah. Oh, criminals overnight, I'm gonna write another letter. I'm um, sorry, right now I'm feeling like, like, uh, like, jumped out of a, not an airplane, but maybe off like a water tower and then like landed horseback style on a fence, like a chain link fence. Like somebody not just kicked me in the nuts, but like a giant robot kicked me in the nuts. I don't know why I feel like somebody kicked me in the nuts, but it's difficult to even breathe. I don't know where that comes from. It's probably not cancer. Um, so I do appreciate the super chats. It looks like I missed another one here. So Clover, I've been throwing five bucks back and forth at Clover when he does some of his stuff. I do appreciate, I think you're definitely throwing more five bucks at me at this point. So thanks for that. And then Scotty threw 10 bucks. Outstanding job. Thanks for what you're doing. You're welcome. Um, like I said, I know there's a bunch of people that can't or don't, you know, aren't able to read this uh, easily or at all. Uh, so that's what we're doing it for. And the rest of y'all can hear it too, even if you're not lazy. Um, has anyone called a 556 five, a varmint hunting round yet? No, that's a good one. Like it's bingo, huh? That's interesting. It's actually pretty cool. I don't know, Clover, if he's got time. I mean, I like to dish out uh, assignments to people, but uh, there should be a, a, a bingo board for comments, right? So people can listen to it. Um, yeah. Somebody make a bingo board and then I can put it on the screen. Like put it on your Instagram and then I could open up your Instagram and put it on the screen. That would be kind of cool. 
Um, yeah, maybe there's some ways to play with that. Have everybody jump into a chat and everybody puts a bingo board that's different on their screen. You'd have to have different bingo boards, right? But somebody could make like what, 10 bingo boards pretty randomly out of like Illustrator or something as good as Illustrator. And then uh, have like nine people in a chat and one person hosting it and then start reading comments or something or watch a video or something. And then, uh, yeah, it would be interesting. I bet you like four people would be interested in that, but it would be interesting as shit for me, Smeggy, like two other people maybe. Um, no, that's pretty good. No, I haven't heard anybody say nothing about varmint hunting. This is about the pistol brace. Do people pistol brace with, I mean, do people use a pistol brace to varmint hunt? If like you took all the gun stuff in the planet and put it all together, like varmint hunting would be almost the last thing I would ever do because I like dogs and I just have no interest in it. I mean, it's legal in there or whatever to be able to do it, but I just don't care. So that's an interesting one, but I have not heard it yet. Oh, very cool. You're doing stream. Like I said, not even a problem. Appreciate it. Um, I know, but well, plus now I just made more money than I've made in the last for a while. So I appreciate it. I just made 25 bucks. So it's almost like a real job. Um, uh, I only know of two times ever that braces have been used for a mass murder. Thing is with their popularity, no doubt there are even far more cases of home defense. That's interesting. Um, that's true. Um, some of these, I don't know, we could have a whole discussion probably about what to learn from the comments, right? Because, uh, it's, um, sorry, I'm getting mosquito bites all over my, like, oh, my shirt doesn't hit my pants, so I had to move my shirt right here. Um, well, not the home defense. I haven't heard too many people say defense or whatever, but, um, yeah, that'd be interesting. You know what else? As you're saying that, though, I've got a lot of stuff going through my head, I guess, right now. There, I've never heard anybody say anything about it as a truck gun. And I don't know if we want to necessarily start bringing up truck guns to the ATF. <laughs> I'm not saying that's a good idea. I'm just saying I haven't heard anybody say it. Maybe that's a good thing. And then another 10 bucks. Man, I appreciate that a lot. I did put Super Chat in the thing, but I'm not proud, man. I do not have a lot of money, so I definitely appreciate that cash. We get paid on the 20th. I don't know if I get paid these Super Chats this time, but... You know, all this money goes to paying bills and food. So I appreciate it. Oh, you know, maybe I did. I went walking this morning and I haven't been walking in a while. And I was like, Psh, I can walk. It's no big deal. So I walked like five miles. Maybe I did just smush my balls up somehow. I, I, typically, I'll jump over fences and stuff. But uh, I did smash down onto a bunch of fences this morning. No, I have no idea. I did walk this morning. But I have no idea why my sack was smashed. Uh, thanks for moderating. Enjoy your streams as well. Yeah, he's okay. Uh, oh, he's got one coming up in an hour. I don't want to cork you then. Give me a heads up. Is this because of the governor or is that tomorrow? Or are you just going to do one to play out the whole thing with your governor in cahoots? Play your whole thing out. Make it look like Texas is a big deal. Just because you're going to do concealed carry, or I mean constitutional carry at the Alamo. Um, I don't know anybody around here who farmer hunts with a brace. Most of that requires accuracy and braces are stupid worthless when it comes to that. See, I wouldn't call around calling that because braces allow people to shoot. And when you got varmint, you got to remember them stupid pigs. So for, uh, you know, folks that might need a brace in order to hang out of a helicopter, and if they only got the one arm, so they got to be in some kind of a suspended thing, then, you know what I'm saying? There probably is applications for sure for pigs. But I guess when you're thinking of it, I'm thinking of it, we're thinking coyotes or something, right? At distance or groundhogs or something. Oh, but then you see it right here. I don't know of folks who hunt pigs with them either, but I do know folks who deer hunt with them just to more compact inside a box hand. Well, I'm talking about what I just said. Uh, rambling here, but most who hunt with them around here use them in 300 blackout, not 556. Five, well, who cares? It's brace is a brace, right? But you're just saying, I guess. Because you're in the pocket of big 300 blackout. We all know that. Uh, he has to bring it up whenever. He gets paid like 300 bucks every time he says 300 blackout. Uh, playing it out, a couple of updates. Oh, yeah. For you talking about your Texas thing. Yeah. Um, I'll just end this one. I'm only doing this until I have to fall asleep. And uh, I'll fall asleep. Uh, this is 300 blackout smaller than 556. Five, yeah. It's about half. Almost half. Um, the ATF are always up to no good. 
Yeah, pretty much. They do good things sometimes, but that's only and then they start doing bad things again. Uh, thought varmints were rats. Yeah, pretty much anything that isn't a game animal is a varmint. So it used to be pests, but I don't even think it's pests anymore. Half the time it's just stuff that people can get away with shooting that nobody else cares about. And they're not game animals. Pretty much if you're not going to eat them, right? Then they're varmint. And then there's people that eat everything, so that doesn't even count. Uh, all right, yeah, we should get back to the comments and not just super thing. So thanks for that. All right, so um, at this point, we did have the voting out there. So the people that have super chatted, they're better than everybody else because they have now paid me off. So then if you want 42, I'll keep not shutting up and give you additional commentary. Uh, 81, I'll shut up and just read these things. All right, so we're in the pistol braces. We've read quite a few already, and then I stopped probably because of a super chat or something. So uh, um, I'll pick up here with 14.23 as soon as I drink some coffee now that I just talk myself out. And have drink some coffee. What is this, some kind of ATF form you got to fill out with all these back and forths and what ifs and whatnot? All right, so one, four, two, three. There are multitude legal and technical. Did we just read this one? I feel like we just read it. We're going to go to the next one. 1428, in reference to docket number ATF 2021 R-08, where do I start? Adding taxes to or overtaxing firearm and firearms accessories haven't, hasn't ever stopped or minimized organized criminal activity. As we have seen recently in places like Chicago, non-organized criminality are not using concealable rifles, SBRs or SBSs, or braced pistols to visit violence upon the population. We, as we, I was in the military, my fellow warriors, were at a great disadvantage being issued M16s as UH-60 door gunners when we had to exit the helicopter through the window or cargo door, 16-inch barreled rifle constantly while dealing with passenger, with passenger entry exit. We often left them secured in the aircraft untouched, leaving us unarmed outside. We the people need the best and most efficient means of defense tools because we never know due to bad actors not announcing their attentions beforehand when our lives will be in jeopardy. Government will not ever be able to respond in seconds to every threat bad actors create. The people's right and the people's right to keep and bear arms is necessary for the security of a free state and forming a militia. This is also why short barreled rifles must be removed from the National Firearms Act. They are nearly impossible to conceal by common means in today's world. Stabilizing braces do not change this fact and silencers, mufflers, suppressors make, concealable e make concealment even worse and the firearm more cumbersome to wield. Saying all this, the only reason to continue on this course of adding more items to the NFA control is more revenue for the bureaucracy. If BATFE is an organization of too many that claim to keep we the people safe, why are they not focused on us with safety and only focused on us with paying taxes? Us paying taxes. Does the T stand for taxes? The most efficient way to help anyone with safety or being safe is with information, exposure, training, example, practice, repetition, and experience. Proper equipment can be added to that as well. Vulnerabilities are created with deception, misdirection, false confidence, ignorance, deficient training, preparation, and little or no access to vital resources. Continued gun control of any kind, like gun-free zones and areas announce to bad actors across the globe that people are sufficiently weakened enough to be preyed upon. With continued changes like this and similar ones, only the elites and well-connected will have access to sufficient and effective armament, leaving vast amounts of citizens to the whims of terrorists and tyrants or plain ineffectual or incompetent leaders." Quote unquote. I suggest a BATFE patrol the various no-go zones and violent rid violence-ridden areas of the United States and stop bad actors from violating Article 9, the Bill of Rights, 
Possession of firearms is not a real crime or constitutional violation. Using them to violate a person's life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness is what that is what the BATFE must stand for. Interesting. I mean, it's a good one. It's long. Uh, next is uh, gotcha. Um, next one, 1417. We in the United States have elected officials who take care of legislation. It is unfair for the ATF to create legislation through backdoor method methods such as ATF 2021 R-08, making rules about pistol stabilizing braces. The motives are clear, but the Second Amendment is also very clear. The only thing this will accomplish will be to tie up courts with unnecessary litigation. This also makes it harder for people who are disabled to defend themselves as easily. It also really says a lot that so many people feel the ATF only seems to make laws that would make law-abiding citizens felons and yet does nothing to help fight against real criminals. I believe it has been made clear by this rule, 2021 R-08, you only want to make it harder and more strict for Americans to defend themselves as well as make us register our more law-abiding people's weapons. This is America, land of the free, and you are taking away these freedoms little by little. I suggest you stop this issue and leave the law-abiding citizens alone. I definitely like it when they are direct with the, you know, I do not like this, stop doing this specifically. Uh, this one is 1436. This ruling would retroactively turn gun owners into felons overnight. Stop this madness. Every regulation is unconstitutional and an infringement on our Second Amendment right. Next one is 1401. Firstly, I am opposed to the change in pistol brace definition. Short barreled rifles are rarely used in crimes, along with braced firearms rarely used in crimes. Actually, rifles, period, are rarely used in crimes. This seems to prove it is not about limiting crime and it's about limiting civilian access to specific firearms or accessories. This change will quite literally make 10 million people felons overnight lots of which don't watch firearms content and don't know about this proposed rule change. But I'm willing to bet you guys will gladly lock them up and throw away the key because you change the rules like people change oil. <laughs> Every few months y'all are trying to change stuff up. How are normal people supposed to keep up? Pistol braces help wounded veterans and normal humans shoot their firearms. I truly so don't understand why the ATF goes after law-abiding citizens instead of the true criminals. Well, I know why, but I won't say it. When did the ATF get lawmaking powers? I thought they were an agency who enforced current laws instead of unelected bureaucrats changing definitions every month or so. Oh man, I don't know. Some of these, you know, I feel like this is uh, you could, this is like a transcript from a, one of the live chats, right? So we have a conversation on a live chat, which is similar, I'm sure, to the conversations happening at ranges out there, conversations that might be happening at gun shows or at gun shops or wherever conversations about guns come up, right? And I'm sure this could be a transcript from one of those conversations. I don't think it's a bad thing to put a comment up that is like this. That's just, I don't want to say it's rambling. I mean, it, it's all on point but it's kind of a lot of stuff just kind of thrown in there in a casual way. I uh, don't think if they got all lawyer letters, it would have the same impact as when they get an assortment of letters like this. So I don't know, let us know in the comments what you think, but uh, I think this adds to the conglomerate that makes the concrete stronger. Is that the right words? So next up is 1409. Too vague of language can you or can easily be leveraged into an all-out ban. An overreach of ATF's authority clearly violating the Second Amendment of the Constitution. Fire to blast. Some of these bullets are here, so I have an incendiary device on the tip of it. Yeah, I can't find it. All right, next up is 1405. 
This is another ruling that will only affect the over 3 million law-abiding citizens that own pistol braces. They are in common use because the ATF previously ruled that they are legal. It is so insane that a non-judicial branch of government can flip-flop on the ruling whenever they feel like it. This scorecard is the most nonsense thing the BATFE has ever come up with, and it will make 90% of all braces pistols illegal with the impossible scoring that the BATFE has pulled out of thin air. This ruling is so vague and complex that it that just for screwing up a worksheet, knew and old as they wanted to own a braced pistol lawfully and felt like expressing their Second Amendment rights. How on earth does the BATFE think they can possibly enforce this needless ruling? I mean, needless ruling, I think, is a great point. Um, Three million law-abiding citizens, so in the, it doesn't say in the criminal, so I guess you don't have to write a comment. Um, but what was the one thing I was going to say? Oh, this scorecard is the most nonsense thing the BATFE has ever come up with. I imagine somebody might debate you because they're, they've are they got some doozies. But anyway, let's keep going. 1406. Uh, I never changed oil ever. I think the garage might do it. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, not everybody changes oil. Um, so 1406. Like, if you Uber, you don't change oil. Right? Um, to whom it may concern. Hello, I'm a concerned American citizen who takes issue with your new ruling by the ATF for arm braces. This action is one that I and many others find appalling. Such actions do not only make the common day citizens who are only trying to comply with law into felons, but it also undermines the constitutional foundations of our very nation. Such arbitrary rules are the ones displayed by, as displayed by the ATF, are despicable, and many Americans will not stand for such political ignorance. Thank you for your time, a concerned American citizen. I mean, we have to comment their name and stuff, so I guess what they're doing is just including that to whom it concerns and citizen or whatever to just uh, make it more formal or like in the format, the traditional format maybe. Um, I thought this one was a uh, boilerplate at first glance, but I got to quit judging comments by their glance because this one does not seem like a boilerplate. To whom it may concern. Oh, this is comment 1400. Interesting. To whom it may concern. My name is Nathan, his own business. His name is his own business. And I'm from a place in Georgia. This rule goes against everything I believe about the Second Amendment, but my convictions won't convince you to withdraw this rule. So let's look at the facts about ATF 2021 R-08. Dude, I already like Nathan. Nathan has got it going on. Let's figure out what he's got going on. First, let's look at the need for this ban. And that's in quotes. In, AT, in ATF 2021 R-08, the ATF cites that there are over 3 million of these brace-equipped pistols. Then they justify this ban, stating that they have been used in two mass shootings. That would mean that there is a roughly 0. 0.0000 uh, four zeros and a seven percent chance that that brace that a brace equipped concealable assault weapon will be used in a shooting. This isn't about saving lives or reducing crime. It's a political ploy, an attempt to punish uh, freedom loving Americans who use large format brace equipped pistols for both recreation and defense of hearth and home. In addition to those of us who use braced equipped pistols for defense and sporting, some Americans use them out of absolute necessity. For example, many of our brave men and women who have been wounded in battle may need to use an arm brace to enjoy recreational shooting or utilize an AR pistol for defensive purposes. In regards to the worksheet itself, each of these factors listed is subjective. The ATF is creating a complex guessing game with consequences. I'm going to say that one again. The ATF is creating a complex. Let me say this one again. The ATF is creating a complex guessing game with consequences. That's a meme. Somebody. That's like a meme waiting to happen right there. This guy has got it definitely going on. To enforce these regulations, the ATF would essentially have to redefine what a rifle is. 
In the examples provided in the document, such as the example on page 37 of ATF 2021 R-0808, even bare bones braced equipment pistols would lead to prison time. For the sake of being thorough, I'm gonna break down the inherent subjectivity in this worksheet by category, starting with accessory design. What does it mean for a brace to incorporate shoulder stock features or to be based on a known shoulder stock design? These products are generally designed to attach to a buffer tube, meaning that most braces would at least have some type of stock design feature. It is completely subjective and could vary on a case by case case basis. The difference between one and two points here is a matter of degree. Next, rear surface area and stabilizing support. These sections are unclear and conflict with each other. A brace with a generous surface area would presumably have sufficient material to provide full forearm coverage and therefore would fit the requirements for stabilizing support. Without specific numbers provided on surface area requirements, how is a consumer to know where they stand legally? Also, human beings come in all shapes and sizes. The Second Amendment applies to muscular men as much as it does to feeble old ladies. A brace design that fully wraps around one person's arm may not wrap around another's. In terms of length of pull, once again, people come in all shapes and sizes. Some may need length to properly use a stabilizing brace, brace and should not be penalized for a variance there. Once again, this cannot be applied fairly to all Americans. In terms of modifications, I'll once again reiterate my points above. A strap that's too short for one person may be too long for someone else and vice versa. For hand stops, the ATF has said that vertical grips are not allowed, but that angle forward grips and hand stops are. Now they're retracting that. Also, sights should not and cannot affect the legality of a firearm. On weight, 120 ounce number is arbitrary. Also, magazines weigh different amounts and some people are stronger than others. Also, lightweight firearms accessories and components can be highly expensive. The ATF cites that this regulation enhances public safety by reducing the criminal use of such firearms which are easily concealable from the public and first responders. We've already covered that criminal use factor. Braced firearms are rarely used in crimes. The ATF then states that approximately three manufacturers of stabilizing braces would be significantly affected by more than 10% of their revenue, and that this, may, this also may affect 13,201 Type 1 FFLs and 3,800 Type 7 FFLs. This data is presented flippantly in this document, but these are real people. The ATF would be placing undue hardship on families all over the country. That's so 16,000 businesses. To summarize, the NFA is a gross. Okay. To summarize, the NFA is already a gross overstep of federal power. Let me just reiterate. The NFA is already a gross overstep of federal power. Despite that, gun owners choose to abide by the law, purchasing braces for their pistols. Now, the ATF has arbitrarily chosen to turn them all into felons. These are everyday Americans, not criminals or murderers. With these rules, the ATF has given them an ultimatum, pay up, turn it in, or go to prison. I'm joining with millions of others like myself to firmly say no. So if you're listening to this, either live or in the future, uh, think about how this is comment number 1,400. And I mean, I've read a bunch and there's not very, there's some boilerplates, but there, these are people that wrote this stuff. So there's a whole bunch of gun owners who feel about this very similar to the way you probably feel about this. So uh, it's pretty neat. This definitely recharges my batteries to know that each one of these things we're reading is a different person out there who, you know, got whatever amount of annoyed and pissed or decided or figured or was willing to go ahead and comment and then it was accumulated and we're taking a little bit of time to just barely scratch the surface but you know this ref this was on page three let's say i don't really remember but let's say this was on page three that means i passed a whole page of 25 of these comments so uh every 25 comments is another page right every every four pages is another hundred i guess so if you do the math if it's possible right it's 
drops in the water, right? Drops in the accumulate to the flood or whatever. Totally cool to read these things. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. That was gold, lots in there for sure. Yep. Um, man, I read one earlier that, oh my goodness, I, I was on comments off mode, but it was frustrating because it was amazing. Uh, let's see, new synthetic oil and design of engines is, oh, quit reading this. let's go back. Um, this is in, how close do we have to Clover's show? Is it at the top of the hour or what? I got 9.30 here, so let me know. I'll shut this one up. Um, let's see. Otherwise, it looks like, I think I'm going this way. I only have maybe eight more or something like that. All right. This one is number 1413. We're reading the uh, pistol brace, the second pistol brace comment period. Wait, do I mean the second time that they've put a comment period up for the same issue? Yes, pistol braces. But do I also mean the second comment period is in there's two simultaneous comment periods happening and that's never been done before? Yes, I'm also mean that. So we've already read some of the redefinition of firearms braces earlier this morning. Again, and now we're reading some of these. So this is comment 1413 on the pistol braces. Um, now nah, I'm done. I'm doing this to wear myself out so I fall asleep. So I've been doing this for like two hours at this point, I think. Close to two hours. So that'll, the top of the hour will be a good spot to the top. So um, uh, Clover can put a link in here to his chat. He's going to give you an update on Texas. They're going to be uh, signing constitutional carry at the Alamo, it sounds like, tomorrow. I don't know if Trump's going to be there or not, but I guess he's playing around with the governor's playing around with Trump today. And it sounded like Clover said they already passed suppressor. Uh, sanctuary or whatever it's called. Um, I personally think that's one of the best things ever. We'll talk about that in another chat, I guess. So we're in comment number 1413. My name is Joseph and his last name is his business. I am a firefighter, EMT, and a fishing guy. I am a strong proponent of the right to have firearms and share this passion in a safe and educational manner. I am strongly against the new vague ruling of turning braces into rifle stocks. There are more than enough rules, as is, that only affect the law-abiding citizens but do nothing to stop illegal gun use. Please do not put forth any more vague rules that would only affect us law-abiding citizens. Putting forth these new rules, you will only be hurting good law-abiding citizens while criminals continue to do as they please. Stop taking our freedom away. I live in New Jersey, which is horribly restrictive, as is. That's a good one. Thank you for your service. And also for being an EMT, see what I did there, but also for being a fishing guide. Uh, is it legal to seven? To whom it may concern, the new ruling on pistol braces, what happened there? That was weird. The new ruling on pistol braces seems very complicated to enforce. Additionally, this ruling seems to target lawful gun owners. This is an extremely popular accessory and was originally made to help those with disabilities shoot with more accuracy and ease. The ATF was the organization that deemed these legal. It would be a shame to take away a tool that sole purpose was to help with these disabilities. The brace has grown, grown in popularity and unfortunately, like previously expressed, this will only target law-abiding citizens. Please take some time to rethink this proposed ruling to put it into prior to putting it into place. Thank you. I mean, that's a very nice letter, and it lets them know the position without being a jerk, right? That's nice. All right, so the next one is 1725. Uh, gentlemen, the, man, the per, gentleman, that's sexist. It's a bunch of chicks working at ATF. The head of the ATF is a chick right now, I think, or the acting head of the ATF is a chick right now. So quit being sexist and say chicks. The proposed regulations will do nothing to prevent violence. Further, they will make criminals out of millions of law-abiding citizens. I strongly urge you to reject these new regulations. Jeff and then his own business and his email address for some um, do, do, do you notice many of these are not properly citing the docket number? Yeah, I can't tell you if that's problematic because they're already submitted, right? They're already in the pile of shared or authorized or whatever the word is. So I really don't know. I mean, I guess if they, I don't know, because if we look at the other ones that have 
something like 50, this one has 56,000 comments and 1,000 or 2,000 of them now have been authorized. The other one has only 53,000 and 43,000 of them been authorized. So they're, they're playing games on us and they're not being consistent or similar between the two. So it's really hard to tell. But um, I definitely noticed that very few of them are, I mean, I say it. So, I mean, if it's in there, I say it. So you hear when I say it, how often I'm saying it. So it, sometimes it's in there like three times in the same one, but like, then I'll go through five that don't have it, right? So it's definitely not in there more often than it is in there. Uh, the only thing good about the boilerplates is it's definitely in the boilerplates. All right, so we're back to 1752. You could say 1752, maybe the same thing. I, as a veteran in law enforcement, am saddened to see what has become of our great country through politics and bureaucracy trying to undermine Congress and its people through rules and definition changes due to a current suit in office. No changes should be made for pistol braces. Instead, repeal the NFA and target real criminals, drugs, and cartels who destroy our, destroy our families, neighborhoods, and country. Criminals don't follow laws, rules, regulations, or care about the definitions. I apologize if you heard that dog over there sighing. I think she's sick of me reading these things. Next up is 1750. You need to start respecting the rights of this country. This asinine attempt to restrict our rights will not only put innocent families' lives in danger, That's a big yawn. Okay. In no way will this help to stop crime. A criminal is a criminal. Criminals who would not obey any laws or regulations to set up their guns to be legal or do, oh, to be legal, to go do illegal actions. This is not common sense thinking, only an attempt to further hurt the good people of this country. Coming up with logical steps to keep guns in the hands of respectable citizens and out of the hands of criminals is the only acceptable thinking. These rules are a tangent in a wrong and dangerous direction. Braces are used by millions of law-abiding citizens every day. These or This law would virtually make every one of them instantly illegal. This is an abuse of power that will only negatively affect the good citizens of this country and further empower the criminals. These proposed rule changes are a disgrace to America. All right, next up is 1771. You could say 1771. To whom it concerns. I don't know why some of them say that. Uh, then next up, I do not approve of this proposed rule. This proposed rule will do absolutely nothing to reduce crime or increase tax revenue for the government. Only law-abiding citizens like myself will actually follow the new rule if it is made into law. As with other items on the NFA, the statistical use of these items in crime is very, very low, especially if you remove the ones used by persons that are felons and therefore are potentially excluded from the protection given via the Constitution. Any financial benefit to the government would be more than offset by the cost of management of the paperwork and enforcement. Furthermore, I respectfully suggest that the agency consider reducing the items that are named in the NFA. This would help reduce the existing infringement on citizens' Second Amendment rights, as well as reduce the burden of paperwork and cost attributed to the registration process. Best regards, Carl. Okay, I'm starting to get loopy. We've got five more. This is the fifth to the last, and then we'll end them for this, this session. Uh, do appreciate the people that have already super chatted. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to suck up for more super chats. I use those monies for paying the bills and eating with them. So I do very much appreciate it. Unlike other people who, I don't know what they do with their money, I eat things and live here with it. So thank you very much for those super chats. I do appreciate it. Not being a dick, I do appreciate it very much. It's the only money I made today. Um, next up, 1726. I oppose this administrative overreach against all citizens that purchase these braces and firearms legally based on the approval given during the Obama administration. 
Laws classifying weapons should be exclusively handled by the legislative branch, not unelected administrators. This appears to be a straightforward attempt to vilify honest citizens and will have no effect on violent criminals because they do not respect the law already written against the actions they pursue. Since there has not been a crime spike related to the use of races, it's quite unclear what the actual goal is for this new ruling. It is to push, is it to push more firearms and owners into a national registry? Is it a ta is it to tax gun owners who right? Is it to tax gun owners out of their Second Amendment rights? Is it to create an opportunity for making millions of citizens felons so you can strip away their Second Amendment rights? Is it all three? I also find it shameful that the citizens you will hurt the worst with this actions are those with disabilities, women, and children of smaller stature. Well, it's sexist and ableist and childrenist, but otherwise. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, the money side is interesting because we, at the two hundred dollars, they have way high wages to pay, light bills, internet. So it's really a cash grab. Because that's wait, you're saying they have way high wages? Well, I'm sure they are paying high wages for some people, but they also have like interns there, like office help that they just pay temporary, which they don't pay a lot to. I don't but it's probably more than a lot of people, you're right? Um, I guess even if you're only getting twenty dollars pop up, millions of stamps, that's a lot of money. It's not millions of stamps, but it's a lot of stamps, yeah. And the thing is, when they count the stamps, the stamps exist, so they could have got two hundred dollars in nineteen thirty-four. You know what I mean? The government already spent that money a long time ago. It's still a stamp. So um, you can't look at the stamps like they happen every year. You got to look at the number of stamps that grow each year. But then you can take that number for sure and multiply it by 200 bucks. And it's a lot, it's millions. But for millions for our government is not a lot. Most of the, like, you know, it's actually interesting. Some people I've talked to who know the numbers will say, yeah, it's a number and they won't give you a, an opinion on if it's a big number or not, because it honestly does, it depends on what you're comparing it to. But I do hear people all the time that say that the ATF doesn't care about the money and the people that it seems like are lawyers and are paying attention, they say that the ATF doesn't care about the money. People who are just not paying that much attention, I, I suspect, and are just thinking about it logically, why wouldn't they want all that money? So of course they want the money, plus they're greedy and they're the government. But the thing is the ATF doesn't get a cent of it. All the money goes into the national pile. So they only, they're gonna get paid either way and they don't get paid more if there's more stamps, they just get paid more for overtime. So if they were sitting there doing nothing all day, and if they were sitting there doing a hundred things, or if they were sitting there doing a thousand things, they're basically getting paid the same. So I'm sure they would just as rather get paid to just sit there doing nothing. But, um, yeah, we're gonna know that, no. There are a couple ATF agents out there that go out and do interviews and stuff. I don't know, if, at least I haven't ever heard them talk about that. So I don't know if they know about it either. But you don't have to know the actual numbers to have some insight, you know, finger on the pulse I and mean, if they work there. All right, so the next one, got four more, is 1756. I am against the regulation of pistol braces. Our Second Amendment is very important to us Americans, and we value and love our freedom. I personally do not see an issue with pistol braces. On the contrary, they are essential for self-defense to protect our beautiful and beloved United States of America. Save the braces. God bless. Next is the third to the last one we'll read today is 1769. Stabilizing braces were created to help vets that couldn't hold up the pistol with just one hand. Also, this is clear infringement of Second Amendment. Uh, next up is 1763. This will only hurt law-abiding gun owners and not stop criminals. And the last one I'm going to read today. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? This is what fate had to do. Give me the thing that is going to be as long as everything else I've read today. All right, I'm drinking some coffee. This way. All right, let's try this. If I fall asleep in the middle, let's blame Clover. Wait, is he supposed to go live? Oh, no, I might be able to wrap this up. That's perfect.
uh, stupid government wanting to do ATF. ATF gets all the blame. That's a good point. Um, here's the thing, though. Somebody's was like, you know what I could do? I could do anything. Hmm, I'm going to be an ATF agent. So at some point, I'm like, you know, you could have done anything. Uh, ruling ATF 2021 R-08. Your proposed rules regarding new pistol brace regulations have several flaws. I'm concerned that you are able to unilaterally change the definition of rifle. Since the definition of pistol and rifle are very clear and rely on the intent. All right, I got the hiccups. Since the definition of pistol and rifle are very clear and rely on the intent of the firearm manufacturer, adding a new piece that defines them differently is a substantial step into regulation territory and not enforcement. This breaches the separation of powers. Now I would like to go point by point on your worksheet and refute some of your claims. Minimum weight. I work in a gun shop. Often I sell inferior guns because they are lighter. The Smith & Wesson EZ is a lightweight, is lightweight, and a huge part of the reason it sells is because of that. Not everyone who shoots guns finds the arbitrary and pointless weight of 64 ounces to be perfect for them. Do you really believe that no one has a hard time holding up four pounds for an extended period or for an extended time? Length of two to twelve or length of twelve to twenty-six. I can I understand twelve. I can think of no gun that could be braced against the forearm and still be under that length. However, the max is arbitrary. Eleven and a half barreled AR-15s are above that length and are still handy and effective braced. There is also a purpose to ex the extended barrels. The bullets are more effective and the AR specifically is not very reliable at 10 and a half inches in the cold. Are you suggesting no one shoots in the cold? Also, I was under the impression that there were maximum lengths where something is a pistol and minimums where it can be a rifle. How do I get you how do you get to refine, redefine that? Uh, based on known stock, what does this even mean? The visual similarities are inconsequential. An AR-15 and an M4 have visual similarities, but since they function differently, one's a rifle, one's a machine gun. The capabilities and design of function are, should, are what should matter. Shoulder stock design features. The features on a stock do not serve to enhance the ability to shoulder the stock, minus butt pads. QD sockets allow the gun to be held and controlled when not shooting. You mentioned disabled people. They would probably appreciate a method to hold a firearm when not being fired. In no way does a QD socket help a brace be shouldered, or any other sling attachment for that matter. The ability to adjust the brace also does not help shoulder the brace. Mm, rear surface area. How much is too much? The SBA3 is said to have too much. However, that upper portion is there to protect the tube, seal the system, and ensure the soft rubber doesn't rip. Structural support is important. Can it be shouldered is less important than can it be used as a brace. The person in possession of this pistol has a pistol until it is proved that it's an SBR. Adjustability. The adjustable stocks are not there to make them shoulderable. The, sh the fixed stocks can do that just as well. It is to accommodate different heights of shooters and to make storage easier. Both of these things apply to braces as well. That's interesting. Well, I've heard about carrying it, but not too much about storage. I'm going to take a quick second here. I guess if I'm going to do that, basically just yawn for like a half an hour, I'm going to go put up a video on my commercial. Tonight's episode, Photo Finish. All right, definitely got you. Oh, snap, another super chat. Thank you very much for that. I do appreciate it. I am fading fast. This is the last of the comments. I'm pretty sure I can get through it, but if I start rambling and fading off and just fall asleep and just sit here sleeping live and somebody texts me or something. Um, adjustability. The adjustable stocks are not there to make them shoulderable. The stocks can do this just as well. 
The fixed stocks can do that just as well. It is to accommodate different heights of shooters and to make storage easier. Both these things apply to braces as well. Folding counterbalanced. Why do we care if it folds? That is for storage. The arm extended puts strain and torque on the brace. That is bad for the longevity of the brace and also doubles the width of the pistol for transport. Fin type. I agree. You really can't brace a fin type design without a strap. <laughs> the hell? How are you going to blah, blah, blah. He, you know, what are you doing, ATF? Blah, blah, blah. And then comply right in the middle of it. You're just going to comply. <laughs> about no. How about fin types exist too? Uh, how about cuff type? They are all designed to wrap around the arm. How far only affects the, the comfort of the shooter. This is the same principle as the Glock 26 versus the Glock 34. You say that since a better shooting design exists, there's no purpose for a smaller one except to make it shoot better. Well, there's no need for other calibers. Once you have the decent calibers, all the dumb calibers don't need to exist. For one, uh, the more it wraps, the more surface area it gives. You seem to care about that. Also, people buy a Glock 26 over the better shooting Glock 34 for size reasons. People have maximized size they want to deal with, and they have to balance the gun out where they want it. If the brace improves the ability of the shooter to shoot it as a pistol, then it's an effective brace, regardless if there's subjectivity, if there is a subjectively better option. Get that. The words are all getting like turning it into alphabet soup on me. Length of pull. If we have it set to a specific length and that length is longer than the shooter's arm, I understand. However, these arbitrary lengths are discriminatory. People's arm lengths are different length. Wait, people's arms are different lengths, and people prefer different brace locations. That's another part. Like, oh, you're tall, you get this, you're short, you get this brace length. Guess what? Maybe I want to try something else. Maybe I want to let somebody else use my show my pistol brace. Uh, plus, this whole issue could be avoided if you allowed for adjustable braces or get rid of the NFA. Otherwise, manufacturers would have to sell different braces for every single person. It'll be like when you go to the gun shop and get those ear things made. You'll go to the gun shop, you'll sit on like a like one of them chairs where you get your shoes shine normally, and you'll cram your arm into this thing. It'll look like you're cramming your arm into a bucket or maybe into one like a garbage disposal. You're going to cram your arm into this garbage disposal. And then that thing will uh, mold to your every muscle. And then when you're all done, you'll have a perfect brace that only you can ever use. Anybody else will go, this brace is uncomfortable. All right, attachment. How does this matter? If it is unusable, then it is one thing. But carbine versus pistol versus whatever has nothing to do with the function of the brace. The folding adapter is also very strange. Most, most ARs are not usable when folded. It is only for storage and transport. Straps being elastic still work. They allow greater flexibility in regards to the shooter's arm size. Like the cuff envelopment measurements you use, they discriminate based on the size of the shooter. Maximum weight. People can hold up 120 ounces. Uh, same, some shooters can, so they should be able to if they can shoot it. Okay, let me see. Max weight. People can hold up 120 ounces. Some shooters can, so they should be able to if they can shoot it. Okay. So that's that one. And I think I'm going to end it on there because uh, I'm getting loopy. I'm tired. So that's it. So that is a whole bunch of them with a, probably too much commentary. Um, from the braces. I got to say, I am still stoked. I would say those are still recharging my 2A. Um, let's see, Barbecue is out here, and he had asked to uh, have me read the, the whole thing for the pistol brace thing. I couldn't do it today, but I think I should be on board to be able to do that tomorrow morning. So that's what we'll try to do tomorrow uh, based on the request from Barbecue. And then if you don't like that, then you can go to barbecue show in the evening and give them what for. Teach them all about your opinion about what he made me do. I don't want to do it because I feel like the pistol brace one is repetitive uh, infringement. Do, part do. 
So I didn't want to read infringement part two, but barbecue cares about being uh, vigilant and whatnot. So we're going to read it tomorrow. That being said, uh, we'll read some more of these comments and then we'll end it. Uh, Tim Allen's out there and he threw me five bucks. So I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, afternoon. Freaking me out, man. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning. What does this one say? No fin type sharks do not have the right to bear arms. That would be terrifying. Well, first off, sharks don't have arms, so don't have to worry about it. But if it does, a brace has a fin, then you're right. It will work with a shark. Um, and, and they want, according to the ATF, they want fins to have Velcro on them. And if you're going to put Velcro on a fin, why wouldn't a shark use it? So I feel like it's for the safety. You would not put any kind of Velcro on the blades or the fin type. But uh, I don't know. I know a couple of people who think the fin type are the dumbest ones. And I think the fin ones, the blade type braces that I've seen, are the coolest ones, personally. They're the slimmest and the, they're the most effective. But whatever. Wasn't Finn a stormtrooper? Uh, I don't trust him and agree he should be illegal. Um, yeah, you're right. Uh, but um, I was going to say there's got to be a stormtrooper drug there about being able to shoot them. Plus, there's got to be a stormtrooper drove with, because these the stormtroopers basically carried around just uh, AR pistols, right? I mean, they look like AR pistols, kind of. Uh, I hated Finn. Waste of a good idea. He went from shock of seeing his stormtrooper buddies die to cutting them down in 20 minutes. Yeah, a little bit of inconsistencies, but I like those movies, so even with him in it, he's not the worst. You know, some people could rag on Chewbacca. He doesn't do nothing except run around going, rrr, 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 right? Chewbacca or C-3PO, he's kind of lame. But uh, you, you, you overlook him because of the whole rest of the movie. That's what I'm doing. All right, so thanks, everybody. You're welcome. You're welcome. And uh, I have the fin. I really enjoy it. Right on. I only have the old original race, but I will be selling it because I'm selling everything. So uh, thanks again for the people that showed up. It gave me a distraction from what I'm dealing with here. And I do appreciate the money. That will definitely help me with what I'm dealing with. And we're all dealing with two concurrent or two simultaneous uh, comment periods. Let's not freak out. Let's simply take them in stride. Let's show the ATF what for in a way that our youngins who are looking up at us doing this go, okay, that's how you do it. You don't get all stressed out, right? And then what happens? The ATF gets all scared and they go running. And that's when we take out the AT, uh, the NFA when they're not looking. So um, with that, we will be back to pick you up later. And, well, and then Clover, drop a link to your chat. Um, Clover is next. If I go to here and then here, that'll let me open up this Drop here. a link to your chat. And if I open up this to this, there it is. This to this to this, to this, to this, to this, to there. So we'll see everybody over there in about four minutes.